charge of the girls right i am in charge of the girls are you in charge of the girls i am in charge of the girls okay all right hey yo hey yo hey yo i am your girl debbie and nikki the original wireless woman welcoming you back to our spot room 303 if you are new welcome to my crew but my returnees you know what we do if you like this video well then like this video let the comments reveal how you really feel and if you're feeling a vibe well go ahead on and subscribe but before you blink share this link welcome back wi-fi's to another transmission of the wireless woman today we will be talking about the three men that every woman needs in their life and of course it's not going to be what people might think but you know hey i have the microphone and you don't so you will listen to every damn word i have to say but before i get into today's content you already know what time it is what are we gonna do tomorrow night the same thing we do every night pinky try to take over the world it is time to call the roll. I need all of my lovely ladies to the front of the class. It's time to read aloud. I am old as dirt and I've seen things as you have. Why do you bring this rage to my doorstep? All right, welcome back, Wi-Fi's, to yet another transmission of the wireless woman. Go ahead and do me a favor on your way in and like this video. Why? Because when you like it, well, I love it. Also, make sure that you subscribe to my channel. So that you will be notified of any uploads that I make and when... I go live. I am going to be returning back to a live platform. So make sure you look out for that. I've been dropping a lot of episodes and I want to hear your feedback on the new direction that I'm taking with the channel. So make sure you have clicked the notification bell for those notifications of when <laughs> I go live. I am going to get better about scheduling that. So we all know what to expect from the wireless woman. If you could just go ahead and make sure you do that from now on, that would be great. Today, we will be talking about the three men every woman needs in her life. And this was a video that I needed to do because even though I do believe that the large amount of accountability for our community lies with our men. I can honestly say that I myself, my logical thinking, the freedom with which <laughs> I feel empowered to speak on certain issues has come from the shaping and molding of many men in my life. Whenever I have men who don't know me personally listen to some of my content that's the feedback that I receive. You must not have a man. You don't have a man that loves you. You haven't been loved properly. And that is not the case. I feel that a large part of women's self-confidence and self-image comes from the shaping and molding of the men that they have or don't have in their lives. And men have to take accountability and responsibility for the part they play in the development of the female pathology. So I myself, having seen certain characteristics show up in the men that had enduring qualities and profound impact and influence on my life, can honestly say that there are three men that every woman needs in their life in order to be a full, well-rounded, balanced, 
emotionally healthy woman. Now, the way God set it up is generally those three men, just like God himself, who resides as three persons in the one, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You know, these are all supposed to be male manifestations of God, but we won't go there in this video today. But even God himself exists in three persons. So in an ideal situation, a woman will have experienced these three men in the one person of her father. I talked in my Who's Your Daddy video about why submission is so difficult for both women and men because of a lack of father figures. But generally, the one man in a woman's life who loves her unconditionally, gives her her name, you know, our last name, our surname comes from our fathers and exhibits what her identity as the female counterpart of that name is, is generally a father. I mean, let's be honest, a woman is never going to be loved properly, fully, completely by any man that's trying to have sex with her. We have to have men in our lives that are around us that give value and worth to us that isn't assigned to our sex or gender. And generally, as I said, fathers will be the one that do that. And because there is such a large, vacuous black hole in the fatherhood space in the black community, many of us have never experience that and a lot of women will find themselves trying to replace what should be one fully formed whole emotionally healthy man with several <laughs> by any means necessary they use the term in the song looking for love in all the wrong places and that wasn't even a black song but my point is there are three men, three manifestations of the divine masculine that a woman should have in her life. If you don't have this in your life, then that would definitely speak to one, why you may not be attracting it, and two, a place where there's a need for healing and wholeness. And ain't that right? Amen. So the three men that a woman needs are one, a man who professes, and that profess word is broken down into several different manifestations, praying, praising. Women need to hear good things, great regard about themselves coming from men that they have in their lives. The second man that a woman needs is one who protects and the protect coin has two sides. A man has to be able to protect and defend. And I'm going to go into that and what exactly that means. But the third man that every woman needs is a man that provides. And provision can take on many different forms that we're going to discuss in this video. So the first man that every woman needs is a man who professes. Professes love for her who gives praise and encouragement to her. As much as we as women are called upon to be the encouragers, our words are an echo of the words that we have heard. And there's only so much praise and encouragement that we as women can give to each other. There has to be power given to praise that comes from the male masculine energy. I was in church the other Sunday and yeah it's a conversation for another day as well and I was watching the women stand up and praise how vocal how participatory they were when it came to praise and worship and you know you see the men uh, there were some sitting in there with hats on and you know I don't know if they were drugged there or being held against their will it was I was unable to determine <laughs> why some of them had come but there were those men who praised as well and they call on a certain power of heaven that's totally different than what a woman's praise 
is able to call on from God. It's a submission from men that brings God into the room in a totally different way than women do. And that's not to say that one praise is better than the other. It's to say that both are needed and both are necessary. Both give balance to the other. You know, one gives energy to the praise and the other gives power and authority to the praise. And when men are centered in their authority and in their power, they understand the importance of their words. They understand that their words can break a bone. You know, we say sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Oh, that's a lie. That's a lie. (laughs) As a matter of fact, give me a stick. Give me a stone sometimes. Um, The words that have been spoken to me by men have been some of the most damaging factors in my life. I can honestly say that as women, we really don't care as much what other women have to say about us. Women care just as much about what men say as men care about what women say. There have been a lot of mothers that have broken the the bones of their sons with harsh, critical, unthought out words. So... A man understands the strength and power and authority that's given in his word. So the Bible says in Ecclesiastes that where the word of a king is, there is power. Who may say unto him, what doest thou? So men who are operating, working, walking out their authority are going to place a much greater value on the words that they use to describe you, that they use to admonish you, that they use to encourage you. And you should always pay attention to that. When you're dealing with a man who is reckless in the way he speaks to you, he's not operating in his full authority and his divine masculine energy. And that is the reason why women need men around them who are speaking to them that way so that when they see it, when they hear it, they recognize it. Jennifer Lewis said something I found very profound. She said, you have to love on yourself. You have to love yourself so that you will recognize love when it comes and love will come. And I'm in agreement with that statement. Love is attractive. And when you yourself as a woman are being loved on by the people you've chosen to surround yourself with in your circle, you become lovely. And that's very true. And like I said, I am both a sword and a shield. So I don't always come off as lovely to people as I could, but there's a reason for that. And that reason comes from the second <laughs> the second man that a woman needs in her life. And notice I'm not saying the second type of man or the second kind of man because that's not what I'm speaking to. I'm speaking to whole, complete, emotionally available manhood, such as many of us have not seen or experienced. So the second man that a woman needs in her life is a protector. When a woman is protected, she is able to invest in herself. She's able to educate herself. She's given through that protection the freedom to be. The protection of a man should never feel oppressive. It should never make you feel afraid of him or of the world around you. Now, I'm not talking of five heartbeats every night I got to prove my love protection. I got to fight every night to prove my love. That's not what I'm talking about. And we as women can actually learn from that model because our protection of our men shouldn't feel like all my life I had to fight either. All my life I had to fight. The protection of a man is a twofold thing. 
it has the outside component that he makes you feel physically, emotionally, spiritually, psychologically, sexually safe. That safety is the number one component of knowing whether or not you have the right type of man around you or in your life. There shouldn't be an anxiety. There shouldn't be insecurity or reservation about your physical and emotional mental safety around a man. They are hardwired to protect So if a man doesn't make you feel safe to speak, safe to be, safe to express yourself around him, he's not operating in his calling. You have a calling. You're a hero, Hancock. You're going to be miserable the rest of your life until you accept that. He's not operating in the fullness of his own manhood. And that is a problem for him to deal with, for him to fix. But as women, you need to become the discerner of what is good and right in your own environment. So the second part of the protection piece is a man should be your defense. And there are men I have found that are really great protectors, but they're not good defenders. And what I mean by that is that when you come into conflict with them, see, a great man is going to defend you from himself. He's going to defend you from his insecurities, from his hard words, from his lack of understanding of you. He's going to do that work to protect the relationship from the inside out. He may even protect you from yourself. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. He'll know you and understand you well enough to understand what that requires. I'm not talking about an oppressiveness. (laughs) But defending the relationship from the inside out means he's going to seek deeper understanding of you. He's going to make sure he's leading with the things that will protect the bond of the relationship. I'll give you an example. Have you ever talked to someone about an issue you had with them and they immediately became defensive? And everything in the conversation from that point on was about them defending themselves. And you weren't necessarily even trying to attack them. You were like, no, I just noticed there was, you know, a breakdown happening right here. And I wanted to discuss it with you, see what you were seeing, show you what I'm seeing and see how we can find some resolution to make sure that we both feel heard and respected in the situation. But they were so deeply committed to defending themselves that maybe it was all out of tact. That's what I mean when I say a man will protect you, but he will also defend you. He will make sure that there are no enemies without the gate and that there ain't no enemies within it. Those are the men that women need in their lives in order for us to be able to take off all that body armor, baby. I mean, Under Armour is a brand, a sports brand. It isn't something that you should have in your relationship. And the only way that a woman is going to even begin to learn things about who she is as a person underneath being a shining white knight (laughs) is when she can take the armor off. That's where you learn where the wounds are. You know, a lot of times there are wounds underneath that armor that you can't even get to because you're so busy protecting yourself from anyone else being able to get to them, too. So they never get exposed, but they never get tended either. And by our men creating spaces for us to take off our armor with them, they likewise create spaces that are tender and vulnerable for them after they've done all that protecting and defending to come and take that, that armor off with us as well. The third man that a woman needs in her life is a provider. Like protected men are hardwired to provide as well. They feel, it has been my experience that men feel 
very useless in the life of women and children when they're not able to provide for them. And like I said, provision is greater than just money, even though it is money, honey. Show me the money. <laughs> me it is. <laughs> I said what I said and I ain't taking it back, okay? It is money. But it's also how you allocate money. It's being resourceful. It's being productive in the lives of the people who depend on you. Women need to be provided for in ways we don't always even understand or know. And when you don't have men around you in your life, men that check tire pressure, men that check your oil levels in your car, men that can replace halogen bulbs that go out, men that provide for you. That ask, hey, are you okay? Do you need anything? For me, I started to notice how I needed these men in my life after my father passed. Now, my father wasn't the most protective man, I can say that. But he did provide for me. And he definitely was a, a man that prayed for me. And I could feel the difference in the atmosphere around me. I could, I could feel the spiritual difference in my life after my father died. There was definitely a void there. There was an absence there. And real men create the type of presence where their absence is felt. It's known. If I was to give particularly young women, unmarried women, women who are inexperienced with men, any advice, it would be to never have any man around you in your circle. Definitely don't be in intimate relationship with any man that doesn't provide at least one of these three things. And any man who can provide one to two of these three things is definitely a man that can be a good friend in your life. He can be an encourager. He can be a protector. He can be a provider. But if he cannot give to you these three things, if he's not able to profess his love for you, if he doesn't pray for you, if he doesn't protect you, if he refuses to provide for you, any man who can't do all three of these is not the man for you. That is not the man you need in your life. While every woman needs men in their lives, you know, this is how we stave off becoming bitter and toxic. We do. We do need men in our lives. But we need men if we're going to deem them as friends of ours, if we're going to deem them as people who are worthy of any of the energy we expend in men, being encouragers, being nurturers, they have to be bringing value into our lives. That's how we don't come out of the situation depleted and drained. A woman should never feel depleted and drained from the presence of men in her life. That's not a man. That's a child. <sighs> a child receives without giving in return. So we as women have struggled to identify the right men, good men in our lives because of the absence of them. If I want to grow a flower, if I want to grow cucumbers, I have to have good soil. I have to have sunlight, but not an area where there's too much direct sunlight. <laughs> I am going to be moving in my um, series that are coming up away from conversations about relationships because we're the only people still talking about this. We're the only people that after all these decades post-slavery still are struggling with community building. I say it, I say it again, you've been had. You've been took. You've been hoodwinked. Bamboozled. Let us stray. Run amok. And yes, there's lots of reasons for that. We've talked about them for decades now. We all know what they are. 
but I definitely want to make sure that we're doing the work as women that needs to be done to make sure that we are whole people. And part of that wholeness is our relationships and how we relate to each other. I'm also going to be doing a podcast called Why Black People Shouldn't Eat White Foods. I'm also looking at starting a series called Living Single, where I'm going to deal with the financial components of what black women need to have for building wealth, retirement, investment portfolios. I work in the area of finance and I I really want to see us as black women be educated in that area. So I'm going to be moving away from so much content about the black male, black female dynamic, even though I do feel like I have a unique perspective on it. But I just feel like dating and relationships is the dead horse of the black community. Y'all know I am still on my boy, boy, Kai, that that dating thing. It didn't work out, y'all. It didn't work out. But we remain hopeful and open. And a big part of me doing this particular transmission today was that these are the men you need in your life. But the flip side of that is if you have men that are around you that are not adding value, that are incontinent with their words, that don't exhibit any type of self-control, that place extra burden and responsibility on you without alleviating any (laughs) baby, got you riding, got you dying. You need to get those people out of your lives. It's just like anything else. You're corrupted by your environment, by your surrounding. And a lot of us have been making poor choices in men. And the men we choose are telling us that. The men we have been choosing. we Well, you know, I'm trying to give him a chance because he's between jobs right now, but he's really a good guy. You know, as soon as we say, well, you know, I want a man with a good career, establishing his career. See, y'all women, y'all, y'all stand is too high. Y'all, y'all think y'all supposed to be with a white man. Uh, so, yeah, get them squares about your circle, lady. Get them squares about your circle. And really begin to surround yourself where you can find them with the type of men who understand their calling as men and are committed to adding value to your life. And you may not find that all in one man, but definitely don't settle for being in relationship with any man that cannot provide all three of those things. And I don't mean has the potential. I mean, comes into your life, understanding the need that you have as a woman for who he needs to be as a man. So this isn't anything new. This isn't news. But I do hope that I brought some perspective to it because I think I can, you know, as a woman who's been married and divorced, as people love to point out twice, you know, I've had lots of experiences with really awesome, super great men, Um, men who have your best interest in mind, don't feel intimidated by other male presences in your life. Now, I ain't gang friend or nothing like that. I ain't going to keep a whole gang of dudes around me. As a matter of fact, if I had that many, I'd be definitely doing something wrong. That's very low vibrational uh, to have several guys that are only good for just a handful, few things. But when you start to elevate the quality of male company that you entertain, baby you can't, you can't go back down you you can't go down you know and i'm seeing a lot of women begin to elevate stop making excuses for yourself really because you don't want to be alone for not having meaningful valuable interactions with men that enrich you as a woman understanding that eventually you will be someone's woman me personally i'm a wife i've always been a wife that's why Whenever I date any man for any extended period of time, and and I've I've had men say this to me, you know, you're a wife. I see why men marry you. Um, 
any man that dates me for any extended period of time is we're gonna have that conversation either that or he gonna cut out because he gonna know up front like nah <laughs> these ain't waters I'm trying to swim in you know so I'm not saying every man I date wants to marry me I'm not saying that but I am saying that any investment that I make is generally in men that reciprocate that understand that and come into my life to add value in that way and for that reason baby I'm on this boy boycott because I can't be out here in these streets I can't spread it that low I can't spread it that wide I can't spread myself that thin I can't vibrate that low no more and I think a big part of that like I said is because of the phenomenal educated encouraging strong confident beautiful kind compassionate black men that I've had in my life I'm a testament to who they are that's why when I meet men that think it's like something off about me I'm like hmm hmm that tells me a lot about what type of low vibrational females they keep around them you know I also lend strength and encouragement and nurturing back into the lives of men who pour into me. So my public persona has no bearings on my private relationships, definitely. And that's what encourages me to speak out and say those things and tell the truth about what I see because I know there's a better place and a better world and a better way than what we're doing. But I personally, unlike some of my counterparts, don't believe we'll get there being idealistic and optimistic but that's the part I play you know if we were all one pizza I would just be one slice I don't think the way that I think or what I see is the full perspective but I do think it's valid and I think it's important and I think you're important so if you see what I see and feel how I feel but if you see what I see if you feel as I feel. Go ahead and drop that fire headphones emoji in the comments. Leave me some comments. I look forward to engaging with you there. But until the next transmission, class is now dismissed. See you in the next one. Section leaders, what is our concept? One band. One sound. One band, one sound.